let's say for instance you have this layout and let's pretend for a second that you provide this to a client and they tell you they want a new a brand new color scheme so i'm going to show you how to construct a color scheme with the use of something called coolers.co i and it is right here and this is a really cool tool i've featured it before and you can just hit the space bar and it will generate color schemes for you now they're not always perfect so i'm going to show you how to kind of refine these this is actually a real good one um, and basically create a color scheme and then apply it to that layout and i'll show you how you can come up with endless variations simply using five different colors all right so let's get started here if you enjoyed this video check out designcourse.com where you can learn ui ux css and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy i'm gonna go ahead and hit the space bar and if I see colors that I like, uh, that I believe will work well and complement each other, then I'm gonna lock them, all right? So let's keep on going. I really like this color right here. So on the right, I'm gonna go ahead and lock this one. That means once it's locked, and if I zoom up, I'll show you right here, that means I, it's not gonna change, all right? So I actually like this one too, because these right here look to be in the same exact hue, except they're just shaded differently. This is a lot lighter. This is a lot darker, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that one as well. So now I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the space bar and we're gonna see if there's any other colors that really work well with this. All right, so this is called Eerie Black. So it actually gives you a name with each one of these. Um, I think that could work well as well. So I'll lock that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on uh, this actually, this green right here works pretty good as well. So I think I'm gonna lock that. And so now we just need one more color. And again, it could be like a secondary color or it could just kind of be maybe a very light color like close to white that could possibly work. And I'm just gonna keep going until I find something that I think will work pretty good. I don't wanna go too crazy with colors. I'm, and I'm kind of comparing this color with this other primary color over, over here so that it will complement each other well. So let's keep on. And by the way, we can move these there, right there. And then that way I can determine if these are, you know, these two colors are gonna complement each other quite well. Um, I think this is a little bit too blue. Um, actually, that previous color wasn't too bad. I'm, I'm getting a little bit too happy, trigger happy with my space bar. And I'm just gonna keep going until I think I found a color that could work pretty well, probably in the shade of purple or something like that. Actually, I like that previous one. I need to stop. You know what? We're gonna stick with this, all right? I think this, these all work pretty well with each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that. And I'm gonna move this over on my other monitor so it's out of view. And what I'm gonna do is just take this. This is our original right here. And by the way, this design uh, was created by a person um, on the, what do you call it, the Figma community. And it is right here. And so I'll link to that. So what we'll go ahead and do is basically we need to the first the starting point is what is the background color going to be that kind of dictates the rest of what's going to happen with the other colors um, in this case we have a light background with dark text you pretty much want to avoid kind of having mid color backgrounds because that's going to make your text uh, contrast more difficult it's not going to be it's not going to contrast as much as it can so for instance what i'm talking about with mid color let's say for instance we move this like right around here it's going to kind of be tough uh, to, to create a nice high contrast scheme uh, with, te with text that sits on top of it, whether it's white or if it's, and actually white does work pretty well. Um, but, but typically speaking, I like to stick with either a, a really light or a really dark background color. So looking back at uh, the colors that we can use here, and of course, I'm going to allow myself to use white and such as well, um, not just what's here. But we kind of have to ask ourselves, you know, what type of color do we want to work with? So, you know, we could use this color right here. So if we just click here and copy that and paste that in. All right. So if we look at this on the actual spectrum here, you can see it's no, it's not in the mid range. It's kind of in between there. I wouldn't want to go much darker than that. Um, but it, yeah, this will work right here as a potential, uh, you know, design. So, so now, looking at this, I really don't like the contrast of the orange against this purple. So if we come back over here, what else do we have to choose from? We do have this orange, but it's pretty much the same color that's already there. 
Um, we could try that purple, but I'm this purple over here. But I don't know if it's going to contrast quite as good as I'd hoped. So let's I uh, just select these little elements here and see what we come up with. So let's I uh, copy. I'm copying that colors code code off screen. Change the selection colors, and then that did not work. Let's see. Let's take this. There we go. All right, so that actually could work. We could probably make that a little bit darker of a purple. But yeah, that works just fine. Now what about this this footer portion at, at the bottom here? So we do already have this black color. And so really, I would say this is pretty, you know, pretty much ready to go except for uh, changing this color right here. We could use this uh, or we could stick kind of with the more monochromatic approach and use the purple color above. So I could take this. There we go. Now we have that accent color right there. And this would be perfectly acceptable as a um, iteration for a design for color variation. So let's go ahead and try something different. Um, taking this, this, remember these are our colors that we have to work with right here. Um, for the background, let's try um, let's try a color that's not even in here and then just work with those other colors. So for instance, let's change the background here to white. All right, so that looks really good as well. Obviously, you get higher contrast as compared to this option over here. And you could always do a middle ground approach as well. For instance, if I take this color from white, grab this color again, but just make it a little bit lighter, that's kind of like a compromise between the two. But let's stick with white wear here. And maybe we want to have this color right here be our uh, primary color. So if I just copy that, we'll select this. All right, it's kind of very close to the original. Maybe we want to change this dark uh, footer color to something else. All right, so we could, again, if you want to stick to minimal colors, just take the monochromatic approach and just grab that color. All right, so now we have to make sure anything that's this color is white, there we go, and there we go. Look how easy that is. Okay, so we don't have to use a ton of colors. You do not have to use all the colors found here. All right, so let's try another one. Let's bring this over here. Maybe we're gonna get a little bit crazy and use a green like this as the background. Now this might hurt your eyes for a second, but let's see if we can actually make it work. Let's see, make sure this actually copies here. There we go. Ooh, that's a, quite an eye strain. So I would advise not using this, but we could just lighten it up slightly. Maybe like right around there. That could completely work. And this purple actually works pretty well I, in, in conjunction with it. So we could also um, maybe use this color right here for the footer. And now it becomes quite a colorful design. So we take this, this right here, this purple. Remember, when it comes to text, you have to make sure you have good contrast and good color contrast. This is not good. So we're just gonna take this and any instances of the purple, we could probably just make white or we could make darker. I would just stick with white personally. And there we go. So we're already up to three different color iterations right here, here, here. Let's go dark mode. So let's just take uh, another copy I'm gonna go ahead and take this background color, Eerie Black as it's called, and I'm gonna copy that. And we're gonna make the background, oopsie. Let me delete that. We're gonna make this background Eerie Black. All right, so now we have a lot of work to do. So uh, to fix this, I'm gonna take all these iterations right here, all these pieces of text, and we're gonna change this to white and white. And then finally, white. <laughs> okay, up here, probably wanna change that to this color. All right, um, so th this right here and this right here, um, we could leave these purple, but you know what? Let's make the orange color brown. Let me get up my colors here. What would make sense? Well, we could probably, we could, you know, let's go ahead and take this one, periwinkle, C3, change this. That means we need to take this text. We'll make this dark. All right, that works as well. So as you can see, endless, endless, endless possibilities. This should probably be white. There we go. 
And let's try another one with perhaps the green color. So you can see endless possibilities as long as your contrast is good, especially in relation to your type. So if I take this background, um, let's let's do, yeah, well, did we try a green background already? Mm, yeah, we did. Um, let's take all instances of this color. Now here's a real important, I see people do this sometimes. Okay, so we have a light background color, this light green with white text, does not contrast well. If you don't know if something contrasts good enough, make sure you use a, um, a plugin for that. So you can use what's called the Stark Contrast uh, Color Picker. So if I could find that, there we go, Stark Contrast Accessibility Tools. And if I click on that, it's gonna load it up. Here it is. You can see it says contrast. So if I select, um, let's say I take uh, a couple elements right here and I click contrast, it's gonna tell me, I uh, let's get this first color right here this color versus the white. Look, 1.33, that is nowhere near enough. You wanna make sure your color contrast adheres to, uh, for normal text, 4.5 to one, we're only at 1.33, or for uh, large text, three, three to one. All right, so this is smaller text in this context, so we want it to be like a 4.5 at least uh, contrast. So to fix that, we could just make this black, and guess what, we're at 15.71, now it all checks off. All right, so very important for you to understand that for accessibility purposes, uh, so people can actually read your type, um, you know, for, for this to all work out well. One final thing we'll do, maybe we'll wanna use like this orange right here at the, at, the, uh, at the bottom. So if I take this and I copy it, we take our orange, look at that. Okay, kind of interesting. We're mixing colors together. We have this dark, we have green, we have orange as well, which could definitely work. So look at all these iterations we came up with. And this was just based on literally one different color scheme or one palette that was generated right here. And you can see endless possibilities with light mode and dark mode. And so, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to check out designcourse.com. I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye.